ਕੋਟ ਇੰਦਰ ਇੰਦਰਾਨ ਸ਼ਾਹ ਸਹਾਨ ਗਣੀ ਜੈ ਤੇ ਪਵਨ ਨੀਪ ਸਰ ਨਰ ਅਸਰ ਨੇਤ ਨੇਤ ਬੰਤਨ ਕਹਿਤ ਤਬ ਸਰ ਨਾਮ ਕਥੇ ਕਵਨ ਕਰਮ ਨਾਮ ਬਰਨ ਸੁਮਤ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਲੈਸਨ 3 ਆਫ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ ਸਿੱਖ ਮੂਵਮੈਂਟਸ ਆਫ ਵੋਲਿਊਮ 3 ਦਸਮ ਬਾਣੀ ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਕੋਰਸ so today we're going into our second day of studying job sahib and in the previous video we talked about the importance of job sahib in sikhi so now we're going to dive right back into the bani and continue so this is still the the first stanza so last week we covered the first three lines this week we're going to cover um the second three lines so the first line is a line i actually want to spend the most time with um in this video and it brings up uh, several important concepts so guru gobind singh ji is saying that talking to about god you know the one true god kalpurak vaidu that he is above any idol so in, at this time in in punjab or even even today in south asia in, in hinduism idol worshiping is permitted it is actually a big part of 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 you go to a hindu temple there's many idols there and the worshipers uh worship those idols that that is part of hinduism and guru gobind singh ji is saying you know what the god this one true god is above any idol so any you know any idol made you know made it out of whatever substance with stone or wood or or any sort of or idol that one goes and worships and bows to and prays to and asks for certain things guru gobind singh guru gobind singh ji says you know what god is above all of these idols and also god is the king of kings so he's above any worldly king or emperor or queen or any sort of political leader why is the guru talking about this why is the guru saying you know what you are above idols and you are above kings you know you are the god of gods you're the king of kings you're the highest of those groups why is he bringing this up and the reason actually is extremely practical you think of idol worshiping and when when i talk about this when i teach about this concept in gurbani study a lot of students say oh of course like of course idol worshiping is not in sikhi like i don't worship idols you know i don't go to any sort of statue or painting and i don't worship it of course i don't i bow to the guru granth sahib and you know then i go listen to kirtan like i don't i don't worship an idol what are you talking about this is easy and the question that that i always throw back is Are you sure you don't worship idols? Because an idol isn't just a statue of a god or goddess. An idol is also another person. So think about that for a second. Are there people in our lives today that we literally treat in a godly way? You know, are there people that we think are perfect that cannot make a mistake and therefore we not in a in a spiritual sense worship them, but we worship them emotionally? you know whether it's it's a, a family member a friend a significant other someone that we put at the highest pedestal like a god someone that we feel can never make a mistake so therefore we worship them you know it, it it that that is idol worshiping as well it's good to have role models it's good to look up to people but to think that someone is perfect that they're invincible that they are the ones that will bring you to wherever you need to go in life that is also idol worshiping and guru gobind singh ji says that is not permitted in sikhi either that's highly discouraged because at the end of the day no human being is perfect only the guru and akal purakh vai guru are perfect so therefore worship and do ardas and look up to the guru and akal purakh vai guru the god of gods not to other people and certainly not to statues or figurines or other paintings and in terms of you know king of kings a lot of times even today you see many people you know sucking up or or trying to be extremely overly friendly you know overcompensating to political leaders to rich people to people that they think can help them in some way oh you know this person has is well connected if i'm really nice to this person perhaps i can get a job at their company or my kid can get into this school or i can land that big business deal and make a lot of money if i'm just really nice to this one person if i you know i suck up to them i give them favors i just praise them that is also treating someone like an idol that is also putting your your praise your request your hope onto another person and not to god 
So here, Guru Gobind Singh Ji is saying, why are you worshipping? Why are you obsessing? Why are you asking other human beings for all of these favors, for all of these requests? When instead, don't ask a king, ask the king of kings. You know, don't, don't worship an idol, worship the god of gods instead. Because at the end of the day, whether you're worshipping your boss, you're worshipping, uh, you know, a potential client, at the end of the day, they are not the ones deciding anything. God is the one behind them that is a controlling power. So why would you go to the, to the middle person? Go to the source and then make your request. If you, if you want something to be done in your life, do an ardas to the God of gods. You know, don't go begging to another human being for those things. Instead, go to God directly and ask for whatever you want to ask. You know, don't... You know, don't, don't go begging to the teacher, but go begging Duardas to the God of gods, and you'll get what you want through that. Don't go through the middle person. Guru Gobind Singh Ji makes it very clear here that God is the highest of the high in every single category. The God of gods, the King of kings. So therefore, this concept is extremely relevant to us today, and something that I feel a lot of us tend to forget in that we get caught up and we just see human beings and we forget that at the end of the day that it's not human beings that are making these choices it is god who is controlling everything behind the scenes so therefore go to god with your request not to individual human beings don't 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 beg them don't 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 pray to them I'd rather pray and beg and do ardas to the to the god of gods to a god put and you will get everything you want through that means and in the second line here, Guru Gobind Singh Ji says with something that is, you know, something throughout Gurbani altogether. In Japji, in Japji side, we talk about this concept too, that God is beyond comprehension. So this is important to acknowledge here that at the end of the day, no matter how much we try to understand God, and in Jab Sahib, Guru Gobind Singh Ji beautifully describes his qualities, his characteristics, but he writes right in the beginning of this Bani that he is beyond comprehension. And some people may look at this and be like, okay, well, if God is beyond comprehension, why are we even trying to learn about him? Well, the reason why we're trying to learn about him is at least we can learn something, right? Something is better than, than nothing. And the main reason why this line is there is not to discourage us, but rather to remind us to not get frustrated or not to get annoyed or upset that if you feel you cannot understand God completely. A lot of people have big egos. And they may have been very, very successful in their academic life, in their professional life. Maybe they have five PhDs from Ivy League schools in philosophy and religion. And here they are struggling to understand God. And they're getting frustrated saying, hey, you know what? I was able to write books. Why can't I understand this? And the reason for that is because God is beyond comprehension. No matter how much we try, no matter how smart we may be, how brilliant we may be at logic and academics and, and whatever, at the end of the day, Guru Gobind Singh Ji makes it very clear that he is beyond our understanding. So we have to set our egos aside and accept with open arms the fact that we will never fully understand God and we have to be okay with that. That's fine. That's, that, that's, that's okay. Something we have to just accept and, and be happy with and try our best to understand with whatever limited ability that we've been given. And again, in the, in the third line, the idea continues where Guru Gobind Singh is basically saying that it is impossible to fully describe the greatness of God. No matter how much someone tries, they cannot fully describe how great uh, this one being is. So with that, we'll finish this lesson and I will see you all next week. Vai Guruji ka khalsa, Vai Guruji ki fateh.